Uh, for those who might not know much about me, I work under authority. Um, I'm a secretary to uh, one of our, our bishops, our archbishop. And from what I've learned from my office, uh, whenever someone wants to see my boss, the archbishop, the person must pass through me. Do you know why? Hello? Christ the King? If you need an appointment with someone, usually you do the appointment book through the secretary. Is that not the practice? Today we hear that some people want to have an appointment with Jesus. And what did they do? Obvious, they didn't go straight to Jesus. And they needed some men to push them to see Jesus. We have two of them that were mentioned in today's gospel. I will try to use these two men to show you how you can also make an appointment with Jesus and see him. Amen. The first person we hear of is Philip. We are told that these men came from a place, they were Greeks, and then they said, you want to have an appointment with Jesus. Philip, what should we do? We have come to you. There was one reason. Philip had come from their own background. Philip had come from where they were coming from. So they felt that, they felt that once we see Philip, he will listen to us. They had a, a kind of relationship with Philip, a personal one. So that's why they went to Philip. If you want to also have a time with Jesus, if you want to see Jesus, we all need Philips in our life. You have to identify the Philips in your life. I'll give you some examples. For us as Catholics, now at Mass, to move to Jesus, to see Jesus, your Philip can be the Word of God that is read at Mass. Some come to Mass and just the readings are enough for them to have that appointment with Jesus. Others, the communion they take at Mass, they receive at Mass, becomes their appointment with Jesus. Others, the Word of God, the homily the priest, the priest gives. Others, the music they hear at Mass. But when you go home, your wife, your husband, your parents, your colleagues at work, they can also be Philips to you. Because some of these men we see around, they encourage us in our faith. But that is not all. You yourself, too, you must be a Philip to others. You should be able to draw some people to Jesus. If somebody wants to meet Jesus, somebody wants to know God better, can a person tell you, help me to pray? Has somebody told you before? Can you help me to pray? Has that gone on you? We need to be Philip also. That is the point number one in trying to have that one-on-one -on -one with Jesus and appoint him with Jesus. Number two, when they had told Philip, we are told that he went on to see a man, another disciple called what? Andrew. Philip and Andrew, they had differences. I will explain. You know, we are told that one of the first apostles of Jesus, the first two, was Andrew and his brother Simon. So because Andrew was the first of the apostles to be called by Jesus, he kind of had a closer contact, a closer work with Jesus than the other ten. So Philip, who had come to Jesus, wanted to go to Jesus, went to his brother Andrew because he knew that, oh, if Andrew should join me to go to Jesus, for these men to be heard. You know, I hear there are cabinet ministers. Is that true? Uh, the ministers, I hear some of them are cabinet ministers. So you see, everywhere we are, we have people who are closer to their source, closer to those in power. And for us, as Catholics, the Andrews that we see, the Andrews that we see should be really ourselves. That we have to move away to have that one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Because Andrew had that one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. He didn't only become an apostle, he could go to Jesus' presence. We need that. Sometimes you may only be, somebody will come to you, a Philip, and then you can help the person to pray. But you yourself, you are not praying. Somebody can come to you as a husband, your wife, your child may come to you. Daddy, how do you pray the rosary? You might teach your child, but you yourself, you are not praying the rosary. Priest, people can come to me, I can direct them, but my, I myself am not praying. You may be a lector, a chorister, you may be a church leader. And you come to Mass and organize program, but you yourself, you don't benefit from the program because you don't make it your personal interest. You need to move from being a Philip to an Andrew. That closeness. You have done 33 days of Lent already. Have you moved closer? Have you come closer to Jesus in your relationship? Or you are still the same when you began on Ash Wednesday, the last one. 
When they had gone to Jesus, they had told that Jesus told them, that, oh, okay, why are you looking for me? Why do you want to see Jesus? Why are you here this night, this evening? Why are you here? Maybe some of us have not thought of that question, but ask yourself, why are you here? If God asks you, just give me one reason why you are sitting here tonight in the house of God, what would you say? Why are you here? Why are you here? Think about that. Jesus tells us that you are here not because of what you get from him, but you are here because he wants you to be like him. Accept your cross. When they came to Jesus, he just told them, look, I'm a man of the cross. If you want to come to me, this is the only way you can go through. Some of us, our marriages have become too much of crosses for us. Some of us, our businesses, our workplaces, some of us, our relationships, some of us, even our spiritual life have become a cross. We are struggling to grow, and yet we are still at a standstill. Jesus is a man of the cross. So when you carry a cross, then you are like Jesus. I pray that when you identify your Philip, that when you have that Andrew encounter one-on-one, -on -one, and that if you accept Jesus to give you every cross that he might bring, bring your way, surely you should feel like you are in God's presence. And that's why we're here tonight. May you have this appointment with Jesus before you leave here. Amen.